Hey guys, Kieran King here. Salary sacrifice or salary exchange schemes, as they're sometimes called, have been this new craze that businesses and employees are jumping on and adopting. Um, it has been mostly used in the past as a way of contributing to an employee's pension whilst lowering the tax they pay. But more recently, employees and employers have put in place schemes that can help them save thousands on certain non-cash benefits, um, such as low emission or electric cars that have certain tax exemptions. So how does it work? The basic premise is this. The employee agrees with their employer to lower their salary and the difference between the new salary and the old salary is paid directly by the company for a benefit of some sort. This means that the employee ultimately pays less tax as they are earning less taxable income. Let's go into an example of leasing electric an electric car and comparing uh, the personal leasing traditional way versus the salary sacrifice way. Mary wants a new car. Her annual income pre-tax is £30,000. After tax, she takes home £24,000 for argument's sake, 20% um, tax rate. Now she has been eyeing this electric car that she, that she wants to lease that costs roughly £200 a month over four years. This works out to be 200 times 12, £2,400 a year. Okay, that's what she's paying in lease fees. So she goes, she takes out a personal lease on it, and that means that her post-tax income of 24,000 minus 2,400 a year in leasing, she is left with now 21,600 pounds. So that's what tr traditionally has happened. Now, what about using a salary sacrifice scheme? Using the same example, under a salary sacrifice scheme, Mary will talk to her employer and the employer agrees to pay for her new electric car in return for reducing Mary's salary. So Mary's salary is now £30,000 minus £2,400 a year, as that is what the company is paying a year for Mary's car, which comes to £27,600 of pre-tax income. Using a similar tax rate as before, 20%, Mary pays her tax and her post-tax income is now £22,080. Now this is £480 more than what she would have had under the traditional example. Now Mary and employer have not avoided tax completely, of course, the government will always find something to tax you on and that something is called a benefit in kind tax that must be paid on any good brought with salary sacrifice. However, this benefit in kind tax or BIK tax varies depending on what the non-cash benefit is. Recently, there's been a huge push by governments and authorities to get people to drive more electric. As a result, electric vehicles attract the lowest benefit in kind tax rate, which means it's still worth doing in this way. For employees, it saves them money and gives them the ability to own a company car when they previously would not have been able to. For employee, employers, it allows them to motivate employees, be greener and improve their environmental, social and corporate governments. These schemes also don't take particularly long or cost that much to set up. It really is a win-win. Now, there are other rules too. For example, an employee's salary can't be sacrificed lower than the current minimum wage rates and it also can't be backdated. So there you have it, an intro into salary sacrifice. If you'd like to know more, do check out your government or local authorities website. This video is based on current UK rules and, and obviously may subject to change. Um, anyway, let me know, do you use salary sacrifice schemes in your place of work and what do you think of it? If you enjoyed this video, please do subscribe to my channel. It would mean the world to me. Take care everyone, I'll see you all soon.